everybody, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me for a new Studio Monday video. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and instead of sharing a project, I'm going to be sharing a comparison between two different markers. So we've got the Zigling Color Real Brush Markers which have been around for quite some time now and everybody has loved them. Well, just recently Simon Says Stamp has started carrying the Clean Color felt brush markers and for any of you that are not familiar with these, these are very similar to the real brush markers but there are some differences so I'm going to show those to you today. So what you see in my hand here are the two markers. The top one is the real brush and the bottom one is the felt brush. You can see that the felt brush is a little bit smaller but both have the color on the bottom so it's very easy to reference which color is in the marker. Both are labeled on the side, but the felt brush actually has a label also on the top. Whereas my real brush markers do not because I have a little cover over top kind of showing me what color is in the brush. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a comparison on how the colors apply down onto paper. In all of these examples I'm using Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper because this is a paper that most everybody gets good results with with the Zig Clean Color Markers. Now you can see that both of the colors are very similar. The felt brush is on the bottom and the real brush is at the top. Now you'll notice that the felt brush doesn't blend out as watercolory as the real brush does. The real brush you're going to get a lot more instant reaction with the water when you pair the water and the marker together. Whereas the felt brush don't react quite as quickly to the water as the real brush do. So I'm going to show you a comparison between a few different colors so you can kind of get an idea of how true the colors are in between the felt brush and the real brush. All of the colored markers here correspond to each other so right here I'm using two of the cornflower blue. So the top one is the felt brush and the bottom is the clean color real brush. So you can see that the colors are pretty true. Up there at the top I just put down some bright yellow of the felt brush and now I'm putting down some pink. And again, I'll put some pink down on the bottom with the real brush marker. And the difference between the markers really are that the brushes are different. So for the felt brush, it's a true felt nib pen, whereas the real brush have more of a bristly effect. So you get more of a painted look with when you apply the color right down onto the paper. Now you notice as I apply some water down over top of each of these, the felt brush again is at the top and it does not react quite as quickly to the water as the real brush does down on the bottom. You can see by just putting a little bit of water I was able to get that color to really blend. With the felt brush I really have to work at it a little bit more. The color does seem to seep into the paper a little bit more when you're using the felt brush rather than the real brush. The real brush seems to sit on top of the paper more than the, real, than the felt. So as I am blending these out you'll notice that the water coloring effects you get are pretty cool in either respect. I found though that you get better watercolor results when you apply the marker onto some sort of slick surface. So here I'm using an Art Impressions palette and I'm picking up that felt brush color off of that palette and I'm painting it onto my paper. This is a much more easier effect with the watercolor I find instead of applying it onto the paper because it seems to seep into the paper a lot more quickly. Now depending on the effect you're going for you may find that applying it down onto the paper instead of applying it down onto a slick surface may work better for you. But you can also see that you can get a lot more variety in the color saturation. So by adding more water into that color on that palette, I'm able to get a lot more different colors. Whereas if I applied it straight onto paper, you wouldn't be able to get that variation in color. Now another thing I want to show you is that you can layer the colors and blend these out just like kind of almost like Copic markers. Now one thing to keep in mind is that when you're coloring with these, after a while, if you apply too much color over top of a saturated area with these felt brush markers, you're going to get some paper pilling. So here I'm mixing two blue colors with the felt brush and if I'm too careful, I don't have any areas that are peeling at the paper. Now this doesn't work with cardstock. I've tried this with Nina Solar White cardstock and the paper is not thin enough. So you definitely need a um, little bit more of a thicker paper. So I use Strathmore Bristol Smooth for all of this. And you can see that these felt brush markers really blend nicely together when you're just simply coloring with them. So this is a great option if you're looking to be able to kind of do a little bit more with the real brush markers. Having the real brush markers in a felt nib allows you to do that color layering really nicely. 
Now another option you have is, like I said, you can blend these out after applying some color. So I'm going ahead and taking again some of that felt brush marker and I'm adding this into the areas where I want it to be darkest. And I'm going to blend this out with some water. Now again, I have to work at this a little bit harder than if I had used the real brush. I'll show you that in an example here in a few minutes. But you can see I can get this to blend out and we still get a really nice transition of color but you do have a little bit of a hard line. So I do find that by taking the color onto the palette like I'm doing here and blending it onto the paper, I get a much smoother transition of color with these felt brush markers than if I had applied it straight down onto the paper and then blended it out like I did on that bottom example of the airplane. Okay, so here's a look again at these examples. The bottom one is where we went ahead and added the felt nib brush onto the paper blended it out. The middle of course is where we took the markers and just blended them straight down onto the paper and then the top example is where we scribbled onto a watercolor palette and blended out from there. And then again here's a look at the examples of how you can take those colors that you apply down onto a palette and you can get a really nice transition of color. So you can get a dark, if you add more water you get a little bit slightly less intense color and if you add a lot of water you get a really light color. So again, I wanted to show you an example of how you can take those same techniques and use these with a Zig Clean Color Real Brush marker and get slightly different results. So here's where I'm taking that brush and I'm applying the color onto my image and blending it out with some water. You can see I don't have to work over this image as much and I get a much smoother transition of color than where I took the felt brush and did the same technique there on the left. So there's the one on the left with the felt brush and then of course the one on the right is with the real brush. And you can see you get a much smoother transition of color rather than those hard lines with the felt brush. So if you're looking to do something like blending out after adding some color onto an image, I would choose the real brush for that technique. Now by taking that same real brush marker and applying it onto a palette like I did for the felt brush, I'm going to apply this down onto my image and blend it out with again some water. Now this is where I like the felt brush actually better by in this technique because I feel that the real brush marker blends out a little bit too much and you don't get quite as intense of color and I like intense color. So you can see you get a much better result on the left there with the felt brush by applying it onto a palette than I did with the real brush. Now of course that could vary between results depending on how you applied it down but I definitely feel that for those techniques I like the felt brush better for applying it onto a palette and I like the real brush better for applying it down to paper. So here's another example of how you can blend color onto your paper without using any water. This time I'm going to show you though how you can blend colors together. So here I'm blending some yellow into the green for this kiwi. And you could totally do this with the both real brush and the felt brush. This time I'm using the felt brush. And the only thing you want to do is make sure that you scrub off that extra green that's on the yellow marker. But you can see you get nice even results when you add that color down. And again, like I said, you just don't want to work over it too much while it's wet because your paper will start to pill. If you want to add additional layers on top, you want to wait until they're dry before adding more. Now here's an example of how I'm blending two different colors and I'm working in a bigger area with blending these colors out. So I'm adding a lighter red and a darker red onto this apple and then I'm going to blend this out with a brush and some water. Now this is the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, the ones that everybody is very familiar with. I'm blending this out with some water. You can see you get some really nice blended results and it doesn't take too long to blend these together. I'm going ahead and smoothing out that center area and you see we get a nice transition. Another thing you can do with the Real Brush Markers is layer over top wet on wet. So I've got this pair here which is a little bit wet yet and I'm adding more color on top. And you can see that the real brush markers work really well for this because they are bristles. So they're not going to get damaged by having the water underneath. Now this is different from when you use a felt brush. So here I'm using the felt brush and I'm blending the two colors together onto this apple just like I did for the real brush markers. But you can see I have to work a little bit harder at getting the color to blend. Again, it's not too hard to blend these colors and to blend them out into the water, but it does require a little bit more extra effort than the real brush markers. And that's simply by the way that the inks are formulated in these markers. Now what you can't do with these felt brush markers is you don't want to go ahead and color wet on wet with these because you do have the chance of ruining the markers 
because these are felt nib markers. So they're not meant to get saturated wet with the water. So when you apply water down over top of your image, you want to make sure that you let this completely dry or mostly dry before adding more color on top. So I've colored in all of these images and my apple is pretty much dry. So I'm able to go back over top and add more color on top of the apple to darken up the shading a bit. Now the other thing you want to make sure is that you don't add more color on top when your image is wet is because these felt brush markers will peel your paper if the paper is still pretty wet. So that's another reason for why you don't want to go ahead and add additional layers on top of your coloring while the paper is still wet. Here I'm adding more color on top of that little lemon and by simply adding that nice yellow color over top on the edges and blending it out, I get a nice shaded effect. I can come back in now with that green over top of my pear and blend that out. And again, it's very simple to go ahead and blend these out, especially after you've already added a layer underneath. And I think it's because it has to penetrate through an extra layer before it gets to the paper itself. So if you want to go ahead and add extra layers on top, you can definitely do so with either marker. I'm hoping that today's video has given you some ideas for using these new felt brush markers that we carry now at Simon's Stamp. If you've never used them, they're definitely a medium that I think is really great for quick and easy coloring. Also, you can pair these with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers because I find that you get better control with the felt brush markers than you do with the real brush. So if you're looking to add fine detail layers over top of your real brush marker coloring, the felt brush markers are really great for that because you'll be able to get into those tiny nooks and crannies and not have to worry about going outside the lines and you get a lot more better control because the nib is much stronger. It's not a flexible nib. It's more of a harder nib. So if you enjoyed today's video, I hope you will head on over to the blog to get additional details. I also have all of this information listed out so that way if you want to reference something, it's there. Thanks again for stopping by and visiting with me today. If you enjoyed, here are two more videos you might like featuring some fun techniques. Thanks again for stopping by. I will see you again very soon and have a great day. Bye!